Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to discuss shared coordinates in Revit. What we're going to do is first of all talk about how these things work in kind of a graphic demonstration, and then we'll actually do it. So I'm going to switch on over to my Windows Ink sketchpad, and we're going to talk how these shared coordinates things work in Revit. Uh, shared coordinates are used when you have three or four or five or six or just two models, and you want to have a standard reference point. So let's say we got building A right here. This is building A. And then we'll maybe link in building B. So I'm going to bring building B in. And let's say building A and B actually touch each other. And I'll come like so. And maybe they share this corner. Maybe this is an existing building. Maybe this is a new building, B. And then we'll also bring in maybe another building. And we'll set it maybe on this point. I'm just using the corners as an easy way to see how to tie them together. You can associate them however you want. Now, the thing is, this is how the buildings, we want them to lay out. And we'd actually like it to be where if I go to A building, when I link in B and C, they fall into the right spot. When I go to B building, that A and B fall in the right spot. And the same thing with C building, when I link these in, they all come in at the right spot. So what we do is we actually take in the project and we create what's called a, a shared point or a shared coordinate. And what we do is we set a point in Revit um, that Revit will use for all the other projects. Now. What it's going to use is actually the point that's in one of the projects. You can choose whether you're going to acquire the point or you can publish the point. So if this is our main building A and we set our point right here, what we can do is we can then share the point with B and share the point with C. Um, if we're in B, we can actually acquire the point from A like so. So what it does is Revit has a tool that lets you actually either push the point data or pull the point data into a project. And I'll go through the process now to see how it works. So we're going to go now over to Revit. And here we are in Revit. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the site plan. When you go to site plan, what you're going to notice in here, you actually can see some points. And over here I have a point. Now, uh, these are actually two points on top of each other. First of all, I have what's called a project base point, which is usually used for the building. And then we have one that's called a site point. When I'm going to hit tab once and I'll pick this one you see it says survey point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the survey point and I'm going to move it on over here. Well, this project got the wrong one. Let me grab this guy and I'm going to drag him on over. Now as I move notice what's happening. See how the building keeps moving like what? Okay. Um, what we need to do is if you move this point you'll notice that nothing happens to the building but if you move this one uh, it kind of slides the whole project over. So you want to think of this as kind of maybe like your zero. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to say temporarily unlock it from here. And I'm going to go move using the move command. And I'm going to say from the point here to the end point right here. Okay, so I'm going to put that right there and then I'm going to unpin it uh, or undo the paper clip here. You'll also notice that the coordinates here, this is more of a relationship between this guy and this guy. Now just for ease, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and uh, I'm going to move him right here. Now I can leave him pinned or paper clips, excuse me. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to set him right here. Now, what will happen is both of these points kind of zero out, as you can see. So let's say this is building A, and we set the point in building A. This is going to be the, the, let's say, the holder of the points, for lack of better terms. Now, uh, once we've got the points in here, I'm going to go ahead and save this project. Go ahead and save. And this is going to be building A, as you can see up top. So this is building A, and I've just saved it. Now, if I go ahead and close this, and I open it back up again, those points will be right there. Um, so this point is, that's where it is in building A. Now if I open up building B, um, it may be in a totally different spot. So I'm going to go ahead and open up building B. File not found, sorry about that. I moved some things around before I started the video. Let's go file open. And we go to building B. Hit open. Now when building B opens up, I'm going to go to site plan again. And you'll see in site plan again that these points are down here. No relationship to this. And that's just how it is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. So it can't be open when we do this little trick, so i got to close it out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link in building B into building A. So I'll go up top, insert, and we'll use the old link command, link. Link what? Building B. Now, you'll see down here it says origin, origin, and it says by shared coordinates, or it says auto project base point to project base point. So you can use um, different ways to make this happen. Origin, origin, shared coordinates, etc. I'm going to use the one shared coordinates. I'm going to show you how neat this little uh, feature is, shared coordinates. Uh, actually, there are no shared coordinates, but let's see what happens. 
when I hit open, it comes up and it's going to say, I don't have any shaded coordinates. So it just kind of throws it in. So it actually put the other zero on top of this zero, right? You're like, what? Okay, so it actually kind of put the, the site on top of site. Now that's actually not where I wanted it to be. Um, I need to actually move over here. Now you'll notice that it's coming up. It says shared site B have been modified, save black links, etc. I'm going to hit cancel out of that. Now let me go ahead and undo it. All right, now I'm going to bring the model in, link. And I'm going to say, let's bring in uh, building B. And I'm just going to say origin, origin. And I go ahead and open it. All right, so it drops in the project and it's fallen over here somewhere. All right, so notice again, depending on which point you choose, they set up a certain way. Now, what I'm going to do is take this building and I'm going to move it. I'm going to use the A building as my, uh, I guess, my base reference. I'm going to get close here. I'm going to type in SE, that's for snap endpoint. And I'm going to snap those two endpoints together. Again, for I know these are two walls, but this is just for our example. And you'll see how they're matched up nice. I'll go to thin line. You'll see they're pretty much dead on. All right, so this is where we want this building to remember where it is. Now, here's where it gets kind of interesting. We have building A, which we're in, that we're in building A. And we linked in building B. We want building B to remember the relationship. So what we do is we go up top. And on the Manage tab, you'll see you have lots of different tools, especially under these here. So we have a, a tool called uh, Location, which actually you can set, you know, you're in Oklahoma, you're in Missouri. And then you have this one, we drop down, it says Coordinates. Now, within the coordinates, you see it says Acquire Coordinates, and it also says Publish Coordinates. Now, since we're in Building A that has the right information, we're going to publish or push the coordinates to B. So I hit Publish Coordinates to B. Now, what I'm going to do is it kind of jumps out the command like, wait, what happened there? So we'll go back again. And you'll see it says publish coordinates. Now, if you hold still for a moment, your cursor will say or down in the lower part of your screen, it says select a linked project to which to publish shared coordinate system. So I pick building B. Now we pick it. Now, at this point, we're going to say remember it as an internal coordinate and we hit OK. You can have multiple points. For instance, maybe you have a condo and or and you want this condo to sit on a lake in three or four different spots. You can actually tell it to remember four or five different spots related to the site. And it'll remember those four or five different spots. So when you bring it in, you can actually place it on those predetermined four or five different spots. Uh, that's for another video. So we're just trying to synchronize these two. Now, at that point, you're thinking, oh, life is good. But there's one step, and this is what, uh, what usually gets missed. I'm going to go up to the Insert tab. And on Insert tab, you'll see there is a button called Manage Links. And in Manage Links, you'll notice it says Building B. Now, this is Building B, and it's, it, was a link, it was linked in. Let me make this box a little smaller. I'll pull it on the screen. And you'll see Building B. Now, here's what we have to do. Building B, see it says Save Positions. Now, I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to go to my desktop. Well, we'll just see what happens. Okay. okay. Eh, I'm going to go to the folder. All right. So here we go. I've got some other stuff going on. So let me go to my desktop. Uh, and I'm going to go to that folder we're talking about. I want you to know that building B, it's the original save file. All right, note that. Now, there's no backups or anything. We go back to Revit. Now, when I hit building B and I hit save positioning, what Revit's going to do, it says, do you want to save it back to the current building? I'm going to say save it. Now, what's going to happen is it's actually reaching into building B and saving its locations. At this point, I hit OK. And let's go back to that folder. Notice building B. So Revit actually saved the new coordinates to that building. All right, now, what is that gonna do for us? If for some reason this link gets lost, I'll go ahead and delete it. It's gone. Uh, I'll even hit remove link. Like, oh, well, I done lost a building. Dang, what are we to do? Uh, I go insert, manage links, and I go add one, right? If you're in a newer version, you have an add button. And I hit the building, not the, not the 0001, that's the old one. And I can say use shared coordinates. If I hit open and I hit OK, watch where it actually falls. Bam, right on that spot. Now that's part one. You're like, yeah, that's pretty slick. Let's take a look at part B. I'm going to go ahead and close out of both of these. Close out of A. Save changes to building A. Uh, yes. And then I'm going to close out of them. Now, I'm going to open up building B. File, open, building B. Now, not the backup file, the regular file. And I open it. Now, when it opens up, you'll see that we're in building B, and let's go to site. 
Notice how the points have moved a bit, okay? Now, let's see what actually happens now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert Revit link and I'm going to say bring in building A. Now, I'm going to say bring in by shared coordinates. I hit open. See how they line up with each other. So what we've done is we've given um, building B and building A the same coordinate system. So we'll do it with C now. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close, and we'll run through this exercise again. So close out the buildings, save changes to buildings, nope. We'll go back to building A. Here's our building A. And now we have one more building that's being added to this list, and we'll go ahead and go and insert link Revit. And again, this one may have a screwed up point. We just hit it. I'm going to go back to just uh, maybe, maybe I brought it in center to center or something. I hit open and it just comes and plops in on the model. What we want to do is we want to move it to its appropriate location. So I'm going to grab this model, use the move command, use the reference point. A lot of times you can use the intersection of CAD, uh, grid lines, etc. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to snap right here. So now what we have is we have this whole assembly of buildings. And I want them to remember this, which makes it nice. So now what I'll do is, again, I'm going to grab C. So C's been noted. And I'm going to say, hey, C, okay, I want you to acquire the coordinate, right? So now really you have to fire the command up first. So we say again, acquire, excuse me, publish coordinates. And I'm going to pick C. At this point, it comes up. Do you want to remember the internal point? Yep. Okay. This point, we have to go up top. Go up top and we're going to insert manage links and we have to tell building c to also save positioning save it back to the project and we hit ok now if you've got a lot of stuff going on with big projects you may have to do this early in the morning or late in the afternoon when no one's using the projects so uh, that way you know it's clean you're not have to deal with a lot of stuff so we made the change here and now let's go ahead and see what happens i'm gonna close out Go ahead and close. And I really don't have to save any changes here. And there we go. So let's try opening up building C. Now I'll go open building C. And that's not going to work. Hit open. So now I'm in building C. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, I need building A and I need building B. So I'll go up top, insert Revit links. I pick the building that I want. And instead of using center to center, I use used by shared coordinate system. When I hit open, uh, you'll see that that building falls into place. And let's go again, load the other. At this time, insert, manage links, add, I'll add building A, again, shared coordinates, and I hit open and OK. And notice how the following nested of link will not appear, that's fine. And we hit OK, and notice how they all fall into place. So what we need to do in a nutshell is get a, um, pick one of the files, it could be your, maybe you have a master, um, a master floor plan with all the stuff in it. That may be kind of your anchor. That's where you kind of set everything. So as I'm working on different parts of the building, I can actually always anchor to that one point. So that is how you use shared coordinates in Revit. And these files now will remember that point forever on until we change them or move them. It just makes it easy if we have a uh, one place to set the point and reuse it again and again. So there you go. Tip of the week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in training or support, give us a call. Check us out on the website at therevitguys.com, period.